Welcome to The Dice Tower, a video podcast about board games and the people who play them. This is a special episode of The Dice Tower, in which Tom and Melanie Vassell talk about their top 100 games. And now, here are your hosts, Tom, Melody, and Holly Vassell. Welcome to The Dice Tower! Yes, the welcome 100th... to the... Shh. The 100th... The 100th game! Hang on, we'll get there very soon. Hang on just a second. Okay. 100 games! Anyway, welcome... 100! Welcome to the Dice Tower. This is I'm Tom Vassell. This is Melody. Now we're going to start our top 100 games. Going down through, we'll do six in each episode, three of mine and three of hers. We'll get started with number what? 100 games! Yay! I like this game because it's really fun and it's really easy to play and it's really simple. Let's take a look at the components real quickly. On the board are a whole bunch of animals, and basically the gist is that one player hides their eyes, and some everyone, I mean, everyone hides their eyes, and when one player switches the positions of two or, of the pieces. Or they can flip it over. Right, or flipping them over, and then everybody uses a magnetic board and marks it with two, two magnets of their color. Well, these are just, give me a, another one of that color of their color, trying to show which of the two change. It's a pretty simple observation game, but it's fun to play with little kids. Is this a game that you would recommend for your sisters, your younger sisters? Of course. I really like Shadow Hunters. It's a game that's been out for a couple years, but this is the first that I've uh, had a chance to play it from Z-Man Games. And Shadow Hunters, in Shadow Hunters, each player is a either part of the shadow team, part of the hunter teams, or one of neutral players, and they are basically shooting at one another, fighting one another, using different weapons, and trying to figure out who each other is. It reminds me quite a bit of the game Bang, and Bang is a game I used to like quite a bit. In fact, it used to be in my top 100, but it's slowly fallen out because it doesn't do as well in all situations, while Shadow Hunters does. So, in some instances, I'm getting rid of Bang. It's just not a game that I need anymore. Uh, and instead of it, my number 100 new to the list this year is Shadow Hunters. I like Catch the Match because it's memory and I love memory. Catch the Match is actually a small game, only has a few cards. On these cards, we'll put two of them up at one time, and you need to find the exact match that's on both cards. Uh, it was made so that every card has a match with every other card, only one match via color, and then the first person to point it out gets to keep that card. This game takes how long to play? Mm, less than 10 minutes. Yeah, it's a really fast game, and who can play this game? AJ. I think I should say ages four and up. Yeah, ages four and up. This is a game that everybody can play very fast, very easy to carry around. Mm-hmm. Why did the chicken has dropped down substantially from when it first hit the list? It hit the list pretty high in the top 20. It's still in the top 100, barely, as number 99. Part of that is because there's new games, but part of it is even though I think it's a great game, realize it. Being in the top 100 is still a wonderful thing. It's a party game that really takes a certain group of people, and when that group of people isn't around, then other party games fit better. Time's Up works in most situations. Apples to apples and say anything work in every situation. Why did the chicken, in which you take questions like what happened when the shark went on the blind date with the ant, now, there might be some funny things there, and as the game goes by, it can get really hilarious, lots of fun, and I do enjoy it quite a bit, but I'm finding that I need a certain group of people to play Why Did the Chicken. So, Why Did the Chicken ends up on my list at number 99. I like this game because it comes with magnets and snakes, and I'm also better than my dad. What? No. Yes, I am. I guess so. <laughs> Rattlesnake is a very simple game in which players are rolling a die. This die will show you what color 
snake, you need to put the magnet on. And you can put the magnet on any snake of that color. But as more and more magnets are placed on the board, you're going to eventually get to the point where you're going to have to put down a magnet that's near other magnets. Go ahead and put it on a white snake, Melody. See, and when you make two magnets go together, then you get those magnets back in your hand. The first person to get rid of all their magnets is the winner. It's a lot of fun and makes a very satisfying noise. Melody, who can play this game? Uh, I think five and up. Yeah, it's a game that everybody can play. Who's better, kids or adults? Kids. I'm not a big fan of the box, so I put mine in a tin can. But your bluffing is one of the older games on my list, and a game that I'm really surprised hasn't been reprinted. Uh, it's dropped down several places from last year, but that's mostly because of just some new games hitting the top 100. And it's a game that I'll gladly play. It's a game that looks really ridiculous in a sense. I mean, you get a group of pigs at 650 points, and you get a group of horses at 1,000 points, and then you get a group of maybe dogs at 160 points. The points don't seem to match up. And the bidding and the bluffing in this game, really, when you first play, you're kind of getting a feel for it. But doesn't take a few turns and you really can get into it trying to pass cards to someone else making them an offer of six cards and they're wondering how many of those cards are zero a lot of fun a lot of going back and forth and I, I can see myself playing this for quite a while especially since basically this is the amount of the game and it fits well easy to travel and so I, I highly enjoy it I really like bluffing other people and this makes a good addition to my list Whew, it's going to take a long time to get through all these games. You think we can finish it? Do we have enough jelly beans? Or will Holly start eating actual game pieces? Yeah. I don't know. Until next time, I'm Tom Vasso. And I'm Melody. And I'm Holly. Really? Thanks for joining us today. For more written, audio, and video reviews, as well as the number one board game podcast, check out the website at www.thedicetower.com. Until then, this is Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. Na, 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 na.